All right, time to take a look at the Vivor 3-in-1 welder. So we got our argon hose. We've got our accessories. Ooh, and we've got our welder. In the box, we also had our instructions and it's like our grounding clamp. Okay, that is actually a nice looking machine. Nice thick wire on here. It's great. It is a normal household plug. You can plug that right into your garage. And this is a 155 amp welder. So in the bag, we've got our torch. It actually comes with tungsten, which is kind of cool. I believe this is 1 16th and this is red tipped. That's good. We know what it is. We got our back cap. We have two ceramic cups. And they are not labeled, but that looks kind of like a 4 to me, a 4 16th. And we have two collets. They are labeled. This one is a 5 64th and this is a 1 16th. So this is the one we're going to be using. So we can see when we put our tungsten in there, that fits fairly nicely. And this is unground. That's how all tungsten comes. So we are going to have to put a point on that, but that's not a problem. You are going to need a bench grinder or preferably a tungsten sharpener. And then we've got our torch. And I really like this. It's not denim, but it kind of looks like a denim. We'll jack it for it. In the back, we got our power, we got our gas, and then for the torch, this is just a finger operated. It does not feel analog, so I think that's just on and off, which is not a problem. But it does look like we have a back cap already on, so we have a short back cap and we have a long back cap. So if we need to fit this in a tight area, we can use that. And it must already have a collet in there, so let's go ahead and pull this off. Yep, this one is unmarked. Oh well, not a big deal. We are going to be using the 1 16th for the 1 16th electrode. So we put that guy in. Drop that through, and we're going to use the long back. We don't want to tighten that all the way up yet, so we're going to put our cup on. And of course, we don't have a point on here yet. And we'll get that in a minute. So we'll set the point, tighten that up. That might be a little bit too far out. We have a pretty short stick out on this just because of the size of the cup. So as wide as the cup is, that is going to be how far we stick that electrode out. Now this isn't a very big cup, so you're not going to get a lot of gas coverage, but that's perfectly fine. If you're just starting to learn to weld and you're using this thing, this is going to be perfect to start on. The reason this is going to be perfect to start on is because you're going to be using a lot less gas, so it's going to be less consumable. It's going to be a little easier to see because you don't have to bend around a big cup. But plus, because you're not going to be getting all that gas coverage, you're going to actually be able to see what welds look like when you don't have a bunch of gas coverage. If you can learn to weld with this, you'll be able to swap over to a bigger cup and learn how to weld with that no problem. So this is a perfect starting cup. And DC TIG is always torch negative. So we're hooking up our gas. And this is notched out on the bottom. So that is going to slide over that tab on the bottom there. And then this ring just kind of locks it down. Well, we can also see that the clamp is on positive. And if we want to do arc welding, because this is DC, you're still going to be doing the same thing. The ground is going to be on the positive. So this is something I like to see. This clamp actually has a piece of copper braiding going from side to side. So if it can make that connection on this side, it's not going to have to worry about the pin to carry that current to the wire because it's going to carry it across that braid. So this is a very nice, and it's also got a very good spring on it. So that is a very nice clamp. And that is a standard connection. So we're going to put this tab inside this notch and then give it a spin. So that's all we need to be set up for TIG. If we were doing arc, we would connect that right here. On the top, we've got four screws. I'm just gonna get that started. And then we've got this clamp. And we got another one on the back. So uh, I believe that's a wire holder. So whenever we get done, we can just kind of wrap this around it, which is actually kind of nice because most machines don't come with anything. You just gotta kind of buy a whole thing for it. We can also use that if you really need to a spot to hold our torch so yeah it's options on the back we actually have a weather protected switch which is kind of cool we do have active cooling and we got a spot for our argon so we're gonna put on a hose clamp stick that on and then tighten it up and you want to try to get this right on a barb if you can and you don't want to over tighten it because you can strip that out so the other side goes to the regulator for your argon gas you do want to use argon gas if you're going to be tig welding otherwise your welds are not going to turn out very good so let's go through the interface Okay, so that fan is definitely going, which is great. It's going to be able to keep this thing cool. So right now, we are set for 120 amps. And we can adjust that with this dial. Looks like our maximum right now is 120. Okay, and that is for MMA, which is arc welding. We also have clean, so if you got a cleaning brush, you can use it for that. And we got TIG. So that is where it can go up to 155 amps. Now when we're TIG welding, since we're working with gas, we can actually set our pre-flow and our post-flow with this. So we'll just hit this button right here right now we're on post flow we have two seconds of post flow and we have 0.1 seconds of pre-flow so if we put this up we'll say you know 
Okay, looks like our max is one second. When I press the trigger, it's not actually gonna start welding. It's going to be putting out gas for one second, then it's gonna start welding. So if you're really concerned about shielding your welds, you can turn that on. I never really use that, so I'm just gonna turn that down to nothing. And then we will go to post flow. So post flow right now is at two seconds. I usually go with a lot of post flow because that's when the metal is actually hot. That is going to help to shield the tungsten as well as shield the weld. So whenever you get done welding, you're gonna let go. You're gonna let that gas continue flowing. You wanna have this still pointing at the weld and that is going to protect the weld while it cools down. So it's very cool that we can set all of that with this welder. We also have 2T and 4T. So 2T, I press the button, it starts welding. I let go, it stops. If I go to 4T, I press the button, it starts welding. I press it again, it stops. So yeah, the interface looks good. Let's go ahead and see how it welds. So my regulator is about a quarter inch, so it's got a quarter inch barb on it. And this is a 516, so all I did was I took an eight millimeter hose and I kind of jammed it onto the end. This is definitely not the correct way to do this, but this is gonna work for me for right now. <laughs> so it's not the straightest weld in the world, but that thing has got some excellent penetration. And that's just with 70 amps, so there is a long ways to go. 